The following presentation was recorded at the 2011 Southeast Linux Fest in Spartanburg, South Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following Diamond and Platinum sponsors in 2011 for helping make these videos possible. Hello? Okay. Sorry that you guys are going to have to hear my high-pitched voice, even amplified. Um, thanks for coming. Um, again, my name's Chuck Payne. Uh, if you are on any of the OpenSUSE sites and you ever see uh, the Nick Terror Pup, that's me. And I tend to cause a lot of uh, animosity with people in our group because I, uh, I'm not one, one to, uh, to be quiet on a lot of stuff. But today we're going to talk about one of the coolest things that has come out of um, the Open Sysa community. Uh, for those of you who may not know or may know, Open Sysa used to be sponsored by Nobel. We are no longer sponsored by Nobel because uh, attachment. Uh, bought us or bought Novell, and one of the things that they did was they split us off. So now, years ago, there was the company SUSE. Again, there's the company SUSE. But one of the coolest things about Novell when they were sponsoring us that, you know, I know a lot of people gave them flack because, you know, they uh, signed an agreement with Microsoft and all that, and, which made them the bad guys in the open source community. But really, they are one of the biggest. <coughs> sponsors of a lot of open source stuff. Uh, how many of you guys use Banshee? Okay, Banshee is uh, funded by Novell. Novell is very big into open source and stuff like that. Well, a couple of years ago, they actually were working on a software package called Kiwi. Okay, and Kiwi is the backbones to SUSE Studios. So throughout the presentation when I'm talking about how we build stuff and that, you'll probably hear me talk about Kiwi. Kiwi is open source. So if you're working on um, another Linux distro and you would like to do something like SUSE Studio, you're more than welcome to go download Kiwi and do your own, your own thing. In fact, which is really weird because I heard Last month, Red Hat finally came out with something similar to what we ha have, but instead of using Kiwi as the backbone, they went and wrote their own stuff, and they're sitting there going, why? Guys, we already did the work. You could have went and grabbed it. So, like I said, today we're going to talk about developing applications and the new way of doing things. How many of you guys are uh, developers? How many of you have more than four computers at your house because you need them for testing. Okay? The reason I ask that is I'm a sysadmin and a lot of my friends, they come over, they're amazed because I have a mini network in my house. I have 10 computers. My wife is nonstop complaining because right now it's summertime. I live in Georgia. My room is equal to whatever the heat is outside because of those 10 computers. SUSE Studio allows you to create, configure, and update your applications without have actually running any hardware in your house. It is up in the cloud if you want to use the term cloud, okay? And you can go through, you select the packages and all you want to do. So let's talk about creation. When you're talking about SUSE Studio, SUSE Studio is the front, like I said. 
anybody can uh, sign up. It's free. You don't have to you know, sell your soul to anybody. All you have to have is some type of open ID account. I have a Gmail account, and that's what I use to go in and sign up. One of the things, so let me give you a little key on signing up. When you go up and sign up, and you initially sign up, if you tell it to go ahead and, uh, no, I forgot what the button is, but there's a button you click to say, send me a, an invitation. If you do that, you get, you'll get in real quick. If not, you'll wait a while. So there's a secret to getting into. Okay, Kiwi, like I said, is the package that is built. It's built upon Python and Perl. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, does anybody know what Yas is? I mean, or Juice? You ever heard that phrase? Why don't you tell someone? Just enough OS. So anytime you're when you go on um, the SUSE Studio, if you just want to make a real quick ISO, you can use it and create it. Auto YAS is our version of Kickstart. So if you are a Red Hat person and you're wondering what Auto YAS is, Auto YAS is what we use for doing Kickstarts. So these are all in helping building the uh, creation of the tools. And some of the tool filters, like I said, it's on site or it's up in the clouds. So you don't have to worry about uh, having machines to build out all your code. All the packages are up there. You can do your configuration online, okay? And once it's up there, you know, as long as you have your, uh, your template, you can go back to it anytime you want and update it. Kiwi, again, like I said, it is a Linux. Uh, imaging building system. It is open source. It does not, you know, anybody who is working on something, uh, they can use it to uh, set up. It supports creation of many images form. Uh, we do, um, I'll go a little bit more detail later, but we do quite a few. If you go to kiwi uh, burlios.de, you can download it from there. It's mostly written in Perl, and like I said, it is the engine behind um, SUSE Studios. Uh, one of the things that, you know, like I said, on Open Studios, Kiwi's the core. All our packages are up there. These are uh, the uh, currently the uh, formats that we support. You can uh, upload your own files and scripts. And it's very easy if you know how to use XML to go through and configure it. So let's talk what you guys came to hear about. SUSE Studio. www.susestudio.com. There's the Distra. Our, that's the logo for, our, uh, for SUSE Studios. When you come to the page, you'll see nice little settings like this. A little brief uh, what's going on. Talking about awards. One of the cool things is, this doesn't have a picture of it, but they have the uh, gallery. If there's something you're looking for, someone's probably already built it. We have so many people using this. Last year we had a contest to see who could build the best applications using SUSE Studios. One guy um, created a, uh, a browser uh, disk. It loads up Wine, it loads up so that you can run Safari, IE, all these different. It's like 24 browser, and the whole reason he did it was he was a web designer. And he wanted something that would load up all the different uh, browsers so he could test his code. Another guy created an uh, application that's for doing web design. Or not web design, graphic designs. Uh, another guy who does VoIP communications, you know, voice over internet IP, he created one where it launches its own little uh, astral box. So if you're curious, go take a look um, up there. You know, a lot of people are sharing it, and like I said, my image doesn't have it, but there's a little link called um, gallery that you can go look at. When you log into SUSE Studio, you hit a home page. Basically, it'll have your little avatar, says how much disk space you have, your 
By the way, Novell is so generous to everybody, they give everybody 15 gigs, okay, to play around with. The nice thing is, is because so many people are using it, your images will stay up there for 30 days, whatever you built. After 30 days, they're removed. But the template of whatever you, appliance you built will stay there indefinitely. So if you need to go back and rebuild it, you click the build button, rebuild it, and you go on. So when you after you, uh, you know, log into your home page, this is kind of the flow that you go through. You're going to select a template. You're going to add the software packages you want to add. You're going to go to your configuration. You're going to customize it. And then you're going to uh, run your app and create your image. And guys, if I go too fast, just let me know. Okay? If you have any questions, uh, we will do questions at the end. But if there's something that you want to ask, feel free. Okay? I'm here for you guys. So, you know. You interact with me, I'll interact with you, and everybody walks away with knowledge. All right, so again, like I said, your gallery is all the images that you built, okay? All your applications, you can create new applications, news about features. There's the SUSE gallery and the SUSE Big Studios. As you can see, I took a quick snapshot of some of the stuff that I've been building. Two years ago, I talked about SUSE Studio, or actually, I did a SUSE Studio this for ALF, which was the Atlanta Linux Festival, when I was talking about the open um, SUSE community. But I actually use this for developing stuff. Like, I carry around with me. I don't have them here today. But I normally carry two USB sticks with me. One is a server disk, or a server uh, USB stick, that, well, by trade, I'm a sysadmin. And every tool that I could possibly think of that I would need for an emergency if a box goes down, I have it on there, and I can boot up from it. The other one was I was like, well, let me see what, what kind of crazy stuff I could do. You know, since my nickname's Terra Puff, you know, and it's a play on werewolves, I had real all these real gothic pictures. So, I, you know, I built a, a distro that looked, you know, something for me. When I was at the Travel Channel. Uh, we were thinking actually about creating live distro disks for people to use if they were out in the field. If their laptop, let's say their hard drive went down, they could boot up at least with it, okay? Continue working because, like I said, uh, you can create these things. And we almost had it done. Um, I was amazed that uh, at first they were kind of hesitant, but after showing them a couple details of what we could do and what packages they need, they were pretty cool. Your templates. Um, we do have OpenSUSE 11.14 um, up there, which is our latest and greatest demo. If you are one who, who wants, to, uh, if you're writing stuff for the Enterprise Edition, SUSE Studios is very nice at the fact that we say, hey, we're going to give you the uh, OpenSUSE um, software up there, all the packages for it. And we're going to give you SUSE Enterprise and Linux. Okay? So you can go through and pick both of those. And under each one, you can uh, select your different stuff. Again, like I said, I don't know how they get juice out of this, but that's pronounced juice, just an FOS, GNOME or KDE or Minimum X, a server, or if, let's say, you are someone who has been working with. Uh, SUSE for a good time, okay, and you have an auto YAS template and you want to pull it up in there so that you could build it and, uh, you know, let's say that, hey, you know, I understand that if I use SUSE Studios, I can create my image and use it to push to the Amazon Cloud. Believe it or not, we do have that filter, uh, feature built in. Well, you can import your Kiwi or your AutoYAS and do it. And each one has that. And this was just to kind of show the examples of stuff that we have. Um, upgrading is very easy. Most of my applications that I started building were built on 11.1. .1. And for me to upgrade the application, it was simply there was a button that said click, and it went in the background and updated all the packages for me and when I built it. So. 
now that you kind of picked a template that you want to build stuff on, and we're, for this presentation, we're going to use OpenSUSE just because you know, I don't get paid by Novell. I'm not selling SUSE Enterprise. So, you know, you know they, it's pretty much the same thing, so, but I'm going to talk about what I know. So we're going to talk about OpenSUSE. I selected the server one. You have, you go to your next window where it's, it's going to have start, your software, your configuration, your files, and your build. You've selected your template now, and in the background, Kiwi is already starting to build this XML file that's saying, okay, since we're going to use the server, we're going to already put all the files that we consider to be a server. It's in this nice little XML file, and we're going to start going through here, and we're going to start adding it. Well, the next thing is, well, I want to, okay, I'm looking at the software that they have for server, but the more, first thing I notice is that they don't have Apache. And I need to, you know, I want to have Apache so that that way I can, you know, set up a temporary, you know, uh, LAMP server, or, you know, I want to create a firewall so I can start going through and selecting packages. Let's say that they're, um, you know, I need to add a file. Well, let's say if I want to use the uh, open, uh, you know, NMS, you know, maybe they have an RPM or a tarball, I can go through and add that through there. If they got an RPM and it's on my desktop, I just hit click, auto, it loads it up there, and it's there, okay? If it's another RPM, fine. Or let's say um, I want to add um, open Nebulous, you know, their repository for OpenSUSE. Click, I add it there, now I have all those pulled in there and I can add it. So it's not limited to you what's within the OpenSUSE. You can actually add stuff in there. And you can go through and start selecting. Um, SUSE Studios is also trying to make it very easy if you've never worked with uh, software, okay, or never designed a distro. It's gonna keep making res uh, recommendations. Now, one of the things that I don't have a picture of over here, if you ever make a mistake, there's a little red box that's going to pop up and it's going to say, stop. Can't go any further because you have conflicts. Please try to uh, resolve the conflicts and you can move on. All right. Configure, configuring and personalism, personalizing. This is when you're starting to get into how it looks. Okay, the general page is this where you know you set up like your users and things like that, your language, your firewalls. Personalization is where you're going through. Let's say you work for uh, a company and you're developing your own applications and you want it to say, my company. Well, you're welcome to load up your own image as the background so when it boots up, your customers see it. The only thing that you'll never be able to get rid of is the little logo that said it was built by SUSE Studios. But you're welcome to customize it any way you want. You can upload, upload your own logo and your own distro, I mean your own wallpaper and all that stuff. Once you kind of went through, set up your language, your users, your firewalls and all that stuff and we've uploaded the images, you know, we've done that customization. You now can come and set up um, what stuff you're going to use. Are you going to have, you know, if you're a LAMP guy and you want to give someone a live distro with your version of some cool PHP app that you created and you only want to run on this live distro, well, you can load up your uh, SQL database. If you want to use Postgres, you can use Postgres. If you, you can load up, upload a, a SQL dump or a dump file and then you can add the username and password. Again, in the background, as you're doing all this, Kiwi's adding to your file, your XML template that you're going to be using for building. Okay? Next, you're going through and you're building it because keep in mind, since you are building, you know, a, an application on top of this um, Distro, you have to kind of tell it stuff like, do 
you want to auto log in? Do you want to auto start programs? Okay, like here. Okay, good example. Here, have you ever used Nopix? Have you ever used one of the other distros like this? This is essentially what you're doing is you're building your own live disk. So these are things like if you wanted it to launch GNOME or KDE or let's say you want to use Xface as your default window manager and you want that to automatically log in, well, that's where you're setting this stuff up. Disk size and memory, okay? You can set that up. And like I said, if you look here, and it tells you what you're setting your memory up. If you're using this for... Um, open um, VN or VMware or Zen or KVMs, you set your memory there. If you're going to be building an image for the Amazon Cloud, you can tell what your disk size is. Okay? Uh, your disk image, this is, you know, um, if you're building something that's going to run live, and then, you know, these are things you go through. And like I said, this is real nice because if you are using some of the virtualization tools, this actually saves you from sitting there with the disk, installing uh, the ISOs, okay, from the ISOs. Everything's here. You create your golden image. You can download it, deploy it where you need it. Any questions so far? Are the images that you create required to be publicly accessible? No. Unless you share it, everything stays within your gallery, okay? Now, tarballs and things like that stay within your group, but RPMs, okay, I believe that stuff goes out because I've been told if you put stuff like, they kind of do a check to see what's being uploaded, and if they see that Oracle's been uploaded, because that is something that you pay for and is proprietary, they will go through and remove it. I have a whole bunch of custom scripts up there, and I have my own little um, program that I've uh, published up there, and so far I hadn't seen anybody else using it. So everything, unless you share it out, stays within your own gallery, okay? Any other questions? All right, scripts. Once you get your application, your programs up, you've customized it, you're getting your image ready. If you need to do things that um, uh, you can run, uh, you know, you can go through and start creating scripts. Like this one would be ran at the end of it. I have a little firewall program that I wrote myself, and I have a nice script that I, I use Kate to edit it, and then once I get it where I like it, then I copy and paste it in there, and it runs it, and it goes through, and it creates directories, it puts the permissions on the directories, it's doing wgets and curls, you know, out to pull stuff down, you know, because, you know, I want this stuff to be current and things like that. And you can also tell it that um, you can t have a script that when an application boots, you can pull stuff down. And again, if you're using AutoYAS, you know, to give it profiles and provisions. It's very nice because, like I said, now you're, you're customizing the image, your, your application, to more than the way you want it. Files, like I said, any files that you ran, you were asking about that, um, they upload and they stay there. And like I said, I, do, I go out and take a search and I haven't seen these, and they stay up here. The nice thing about when you upload files, if you need it to go in specific directories, have specific um, attributes and ownership, you can go through here, tell it it needs to go in this directory, it needs to be you know, 755, it needs to be owned by this user. All this is done, and again, like it's in the background, it's being um, built into your XML, uh, your Kiwi XML template template so that you can do it. All right, this is kind of an overview of what's going on in the background, okay? So it's, again, it's taking 
the stuff from the repository, image descriptions, Kiwi's doing the prepare, it's unpacking the images, it's doing the, the stuff, and it's creating the whole image in the, back, in the background for you. These are the steps that it takes, and um, sorry, I don't, I'm not the guy who, who wrote Kiwi. Um, I actually got to work with Alan Clark from Novell who wrote it, and when I told him I was gonna give the talk, he sent me these and said, here, Alan's a great guy, and like I said, this is the stuff that it's going through. And like I said, the whole beauty of uh, the Kiwi stuff is that it's doing all this stuff in the background. This is the creation steps. Kiwi, uh, it reads the information. It's, at, it's accessing the packages that you need. It's unpacking them. It's creating an MSSH to run the configuration. It creates the boot images with the init D. Kiwi builds specific image to appropriate format on, depending on what you want to use. And then like at the example, Kiwi create uh, my stick as a USB, you know, as the format that we're using. And then this kind of shows you the configuration tree that it uses. Okay. Kiwi, Kiwi uses a directory structure for its configurations. And these are the key files that he uh, uses when it's creating the stuff in the background. Okay? Everything in the background is XML, and this is an example of what it looks like. And the nice thing is, is once you create your image and all that, if you need to go through and make sure that it was done right, you can upload it. I mean, you can go in and take a look at it online. So again, more about the Kiwi. It governs the whole thing, okay? Now let's talk about building and publishing. Like I said, currently these are the formats that we support. Live CDs and distros, or DVDs, USB sticks and hard drives, VMware, VirtualBox, and KVMs, and those are all the um, dot vm K, kd if i have the extension right okay yeah vm dk sorry i'm dyslexic i tend to flip things but amazon cloud image once again the beauty about using the sysa studios is when you build your images and stuff like that once you have it ready to go you don't have to download it to your desktop and use something else you click a button and it publishes automatically to, to your own to your own Amazon Cloud account and everything's there. We support open virtualization format. So if you are using OpenVPN, or sorry, OpenVN, or uh, VirtualBox or KVMs, you can use it there. If you're using Zen, you can do that. And if you need to create a preloaded ISO, you can build that as well. All right, let's take a quick look at the different image types. Everybody knows USB sticks. You know, a lot of people are using that. Back in the past, it was really hard to write to a USB stick. In fact, uh, I remember when I first tried the first couple times, it was a nightmare because you follow the instructions that someone put out there. One step didn't go right. Or if you did like most of them, it's like, yeah, take this ISO, write it to here. You got a um, a file format that was read only. It doesn't help you much. I mean, you want this to be like a portable uh, workstation. Well, we have this tool called SUSE Studio Image. You can take your image, write it to whatever you want, be it a USB hard drive, a hard drive, or a USB stick. First time you boot it up, it's going to be a little bit slow because initially what it does is it takes the image. Okay, let's say that you created your image. Um, or after you get all your packages, your images are two gigs. Once it, it, um, it sees where it's writing it to, it will expand out. Like my, um, the emergency disk that I told you guys that I carry around with me, that is a 16 gig file. So what it did was it read that it was a 16 gig stick and created uh, the, the whole size, you know. So it's real nice that it goes through there and help you. Everybody knows VMware and VirtualBox and KVMs. So if you are using um, 
vSphere, you know, once you get your image, you can load it up through vSphere into your, your image, or if you're using VirtualBox locally on your laptop, you can use it there, or if you're using KVMs. Zen, you build your Zen guest, and you can use, uh, which is used by the Zen hypervisor. The open uh, virtual format, you know, VirtualBox is one of these, and like I said, open uh, VM is another one, and it creates it where it's very easy to deploy. Okay, like again, I know everybody's talking about today's the cloud day. If you are using Amazon, you can go through there. It creates it in the correct format, so there's no need to change it. And again, preloaded ISOs are great if you're someone who's managing a computer lab and you need to roll out something, or if you're using like AutoYas or you know Kickstart and things like that. Building. After you've gone through, played with it, and things like that, um, you can load it. In fact, excuse me, I'm going to go ahead and while we're talking. Um, you can press the button, it builds, and um, if you're using Chrome, we actually even have a service that will alert you when it's done. But like I said, you pick whatever your default image is going to be, and you build that. And once you build it, the nice thing is that, like I said, and the whole reason I was talking about building your application in the cloud is, once you build it, you don't have to burn it to anything to play with it. You can hit the test drive, and you're giving one hour of time to work within the browser to... Um, to work on your image, and you have limited network connectivity if you want to use that. So, SUSE Studio has given you everything that you need to do. Okay, once you, t and trust me, I, when I'm building my image and all that, I go through and I test drive it and I take a look, and if it looks good, I'll go ahead and burn me a couple other um, images just so I can have them and I can download them. Now, <coughs> Since if you are someone who does a lot of uh, programming and building application, change control is very prevalent. Well, the nice thing that you can do instead of having to go back through and rebuild this lovely application that you worked on, you can hit clone both on your gallery page and at the build page and actually build yourself a clone of that image and go from there and work on it. So you can have your own version control within there. Okay. Also, remember how I was talking about SUSE, the SUSE gallery where other people build stuff? Let's say that you find one of, you know, someone had built a super gamer disc, but they didn't put your game in there. Game in there. And of course, I know you guys aren't going to build games, but it's just an example. You can hit clone. It goes to your gallery now with your name. You can now go in, add whatever packages to whatever that clone is, and continue working with it. So it's a, it's a great tool that you can do that. You can also uh, put like an MD5 um, check on it so that you can see how things are going. Again, like I said, test driving. If you need to go through your virtual windows, you can go through F1, F2, F3, there's your F7. You can run X in there and you can uh, take a look and play with stuff. Control Alt Delete so you can resend it. Okay? And while you're there, you can even modify files. It's real beautiful. On the page that, on the build page, there's a thing where you can click and take a look at your files. So if you're curious what's going on, you know, let's say you loaded up something, but you're not sure why it didn't get there. Well, you can go into the configuration file. Oh, by the way, every image that you built, there's a new directory on your slash called studios, and everything that's going on with your build will be there, and it'll be up underneath that uh, config, doc, 
.xml, so you could take a look at it. You could actually take that XML, save it to your desktop, edit it, and use that later to import it and build another application. Let's say now that you've built an application and you think you have the next thing to be grateful you know, for mankind, you've created a new um, distro that you think is very nice, share it. That's when your stuff, like you said, that you, know, you have something that's proprietary but you don't want people to say it, as long as you don't hit the share button, it's fine. Oh, one thing I didn't mention back on the configuration page, <clears throat> let's say you do share it, you can put your own end user license governing whatever software you put up there so that way you're covering yourself. You know, this is the open source version of it. Here, please read this end user agreement. Click blah, blah, blah to continue. So you can add that into your build. Okay? You can link your blog into it so you, you know, when they're reading your blog and they want to go download it, they can. You can certify that this application is what I wrote. And you go through and you certify it and fill out all this stuff. So that way, if I'm saying, hey, here's my open browser disk, I've certified it, certified it. if somebody else named TerraPup264 is saying this is theirs and they don't certify it, you know that mine has a certification, it's legit. Okay? And then once you do that, you can do version controls on it so people know that what's the latest and greatest. And it gets listed out on the gallery so everybody can go take a look. This is, you know, the browser box is the one I told you. So when you share it on SUSE Gallery, you know, it's up there. It has your, uh, all your stuff. You have a brief highlight of it, who's it by, where they can take a look, and all that stuff. And like I said, you can also, um, I don't I haven't played too much with sharing, I need to, but I think you can tell it where you don't, if you don't want people to clone your stuff, you can tell it not to, but for most part, since it is open source, source copy left, people can go through and use your work. Cloning, like I said, I've talked about it briefly, great way for version control, great way to take someone else's work, make it your own, and throughout the, when you're building stuff, you will see where it says clone this application and you just click on it and go. All right. <clears throat> so again, SUSE Studio allows you to go through and create your applications online using OpenSUSE or SUSE Enterprise to, as your backbone for um, the Linux distro. If you're one who likes doing their own stuff, you're welcome to download Kiwi and take whatever distro you want and build your own. Um, the, um, before Red Hat released theirs, the only other one that I was aware of was Slackware had one now called Slack, S-L-A-X, where you could go and build a live distro and stuff like this using Slackware packages. Actually, they would do this. It's pretty nice. If you're interested in Kiwi, that's the web page you get it from. Again, it's easy access if you have any of these open IDs. In fact, now there's even more. Um, you can see that. These are references for Kiwi, you know, where you can uh, get stuff. You know, there's the SUSE Studio stuff. And if you ever have any questions, we have the mailing list, and every, everybody is free to mail um, uh, users at opensusa.org and ask questions on it. And if you're on uh, Freenode, there is actually a SUSE Studio chat room that you're welcome to go into and ask questions. All right, any other questions? Yes. SUSE Studio itself is free. You can use it. Uh, if you are wanting to uh, use it for um, commercial, you know, you would need to buy, there is a commercial version of SUSE Studios that um, 
that uh, you can purchase so that, like you were talking about earlier about proprietary, you could buy this commercial version, run it within your own shop, build everything on there. That never goes out to the public. It stays within it and you can customize it to any way you want. Um, I just brought this up so real quick I wanted to show you guys. If you have any of your images that you built, and I, I will answer more questions, uh, you can go back through here. I'm sorry, I'm using my Verizon phone right now. Um, you can go through there and anytime go back and rebuild it and you can upgrade it. See, like, I've already upgraded mine to 11.4, but if I, let's say I'm having compatibility issues, this is a new feature. You can actually downgrade it online. And you don't have to go through all the steps. Let's say you just want to, oh, I'll show you some of the customization and personalizations. You can load up your own images and it kind of shows you what it's going to look like. These are the images, okay? And if you notice, right now the download button is not there because I haven't, even, I haven't built an image in like 45 days. So, you know, 30 days ago they removed it, or actually 15 days ago they removed it. So all I have to do is hit the rebuild button and I can go. And if you're ever curious about how much disk space you have, I didn't cover this in the, uh, in the slide. I uh, used to be on your front page. Let me go back into here. It actually has a little meter bar that shows you how much of your 15 gigs you have. Any other questions? Sorry, this was just some new stuff I wanted to show. Did I put you guys to sleep? <laughs> yes. Yeah, you can have 100. Applications can be infinite as long as you're using it within that. Uh, you know, the 15 gigs, okay? Like, um, just to show you guys how long stuff stays. I, yeah, I built this. Um, 2009. I was passing this out at uh, the Atlanta Linux uh, exp or festival in 2009. And the other thing that's nice is it helps, um, the studio will also help you keep your applications based upon what version it is. Okay? Um, there is, and in fact, one of the things I'm working on is I'm working on an ebook that anybody can download for free that walks through this. Um, when I was in LA, I actually gave a course teaching stuff. But, you know, we were talking about cloning and stuff like that. These were a couple apps that were out there that were in the SUSE gallery that looked cool. And I went ahead and borrowed them, and you can see the names on them. You know. So, like I said, it's very nice, and also played around with uh, Enterprise a little bit. But it, it's a nice tool because now what it's doing, and that's one of the reasons I was saying building your application in the cloud is, you're not paying the electric bill for running machines in your house anymore, okay? You're not paying for storage. This is totally free, okay? 15 gigs, totally free. You're not paying for CPU time to build these out, okay? So essentially, <clears throat> you could be, you know, if you're someone who's working on things and let's say you're uh, going around to different customers, well, the nice thing is, is 
if you're in a customer's uh, shop and you're hooked up into their network, all you got to do is download the uh, the image that you need. You're done. Here's your you know here's your uh, storage and things like that. And like I said, this has been really useful because I good example of uh, why this has been useful for me. Uh, like I said, by trade I'm a sysadmin. And most of the shops I work for are Red Hat shops. And last year I had a server where a hard drive went out, but they needed to get the data off of it. The guys that were there were not keen on live distros, you know, because I, I don't know what it is about true certified Red Hat engineers, why they don't like using um, live disk. So I was like, I can get the data off of there. How? Walked up with my trusty little thumb drive. I slammed it in there, booted it up, did an F disk, uh, F disk dash L, found the drives. Of course, you know, it being at Red Hat, it was logical volumes. Did a quick scan to activate them, mounted them. Mounted, uh, you know, because also the nice thing is, because this is a live distro, the USB distro stick. It went out and said, oh, you have Broadcom, you know, Ethernet cards, and you have, you know, these cards, these cards. It's turning on all the hardware for me, so I don't have to worry about hardware drivers and all that. I was able to get a, you know, DHCP address and found the NAS, copied everything over there. We weren't down days like these guys because they were calling, yeah, we got to call Dell, and they'll send out a... Uh, someone, you know, and we thought it was initially it was a hard drive, and it, um, it wasn't. It was actually our uh, controller had flaked out. But because, you know, I was not using the, the controllers, I was using something to access the one of the disks that was, you know, the mirror was broke, but I still could access it. I was able to get it off. So it's nice that you can build stuff. And like I said, I carry this disk thing with me, you know, because... I've been in places where friends have had problems with a, you know, a Windows computer, and I popped it in, used Gpart uh, to get in there and run fixed drive, and it goes through and it runs a little check desk and fixes it. So, it's what SUSE Studio is giving you as a developer is the tools. Now, I know a lot will be like, well, you know, I you know, prefer to build my applications on another distro, well, that's fine. If you want something to test it live and you don't want to have to spend money for hardware, use the service. One of the other app, uh, applications that we're very proud of at OpenSUSE, in fact, this year we changed the name. It used to be OpenSUSE Build Services. And if you developed on Ubuntu, KDE, or Red Hat, or ARC or any of the other distros, we allowed you to build your application up in there. And again, it's up in the cloud. And if you wanted to take your package and then design it to build out for other distros, all you had to do was click a different button and it built the package out so that they can be installed on there. You can then take it and on there. In fact, um, we're having our uh, conference in Nuremberg, Germany this year, and one of the things uh, that we're calling is open collaboration. And last year we invited Ubuntu, Fedora, and um, Debian to come. You know, it's even though it's an open source conference, we said, "Hey, come share with us." At first, they were kind of like, "Really?" They're kind of scared, but this year there a lot of people are coming. Any other questions? So the thing is, this build services thing and this, is there a level of integration to where you could say, okay, whip me up the live CD with something all fresh off the build form in, in conjunction with these I believe you can if, if you know, I, and I'll check with someone, is I believe there is a um, repository link to the open build services. So if you can get the repository link from open build, you can... Uh, again, under the package page, add it there, and then pull in the packages that you need. So yes, we are trying to make it totally integratable. Any more? Well, guys, thank you for coming. I hope you learned something. Um,
appreciate the time for letting me talk to you guys. Uh, I'll be here today and tomorrow. Uh, we'll be, actually have a booth out there tomorrow. If you think of any other questions, feel free to come and ask me qu uh, questions, okay? And like, so thank you. As a service leader in cloud computing, all we do is hosted computing. To us, the cloud is just the next generation of hosting. And as someone who's been in the hosting industry for 12 years, we feel we're in a unique position to really help bring these two worlds together, these different sets of technologies, and to help companies embrace this new world and this great new tool that allows faster innovation. Not only is it about us being responsive and accountable, but it's about us doing more for you. OS, an OS that works the way that you do. Across all your devices, HP Slate and WebOS, HP.